Welcome to another edition of the Hoop Scoop. I'm Jared Johnson, and boy, there is a lot of Red Ritter basketball news going on right now. So much so, I thought I would condense it all into this one video and story on Inside the Red Ritter's four subscribers out there. And man, you know, uh, look, let's start off with some good news, all right, before we get to some disappointing news. The good news is the Red Ritter split their matchups last week. They had consecutive matchups against top five teams, both in-state Big 12 rivals. First off with number four, Texas. The Red Raiders knocked off 79-77, handed the Longhorns their first conference loss, snapped their six-game winning streak. Uh, you know, late, Mag McClung knocked down the game-winning shot, had 22 points, which at the time was a season high for him. Uh, then they, they, the Red Raiders took on Baylor at home, and, you know, it was a, kind of a slugfest earlier, really, I mean, really good defense, not so good offense. Both teams uh, kind of struggled to score. Tech would end up, you know, really battling with Baylor in the second half. But in the end, the number two Bears uh, defeated Tech. So I think, you know, going into that week, you have to say you would take a split. I know I actually did say that in uh, the rapid fire on Inside the Red Raiders. So, I mean, a split, between, you know, after taking on those two teams in a handful of days, was amazing. As a matter of fact, Texas Tech moved up in the Associated Press College Basketball Pool. They moved up from 15th to number 12 in the country. You know, then you look at uh, the net rankings. They moved up from 13 to 12, which I think that's one of the you know that's one of the major metrics um, the NCAA committee looks at when they're handing out seating and choosing teams for the NCAA tournament. So that's good. Um, you know, that's in line with a, you know, like a fourth seed, so uh, three or four seeds. So that's that's really good, uh, those two rankings. And then ESPN BPI, which honestly I'm less familiar with, but, you know, um, anytime there's a metric like that, forecasting future uh, strength and the, the team overall in the season, and if ESPN puts their name on it, to be quite honest, you know, it's going to it's gonna garner attention. And I tell you what, I like it because – they have the Red Raiders ranked seventh on their BPI, uh, like their power index. So that's that's good. I mean, 12th, 13th, and 7th in the rankings. That's that's pretty good. Um, you know, some more good news is that Mac McClung, for his efforts last week, was named Big 12 Player of the Week. The junior guard who transferred in from Georgetown this past offseason had two tremendous games back-to-back -back against top five opponents. Like I said, the 22 points, which at the time was a season high for him, and it was the game winner. He knocked down the game winner. Um, and then he followed that up with 24 against Baylor, which obviously was a new season high. So <clears throat> what I really like is the game against Texas, he had five rebounds, uh, you know, did some things like, like a, a block or two, had a couple assists, and only one turnover. Now against Baylor, he had five turnovers. It was more of a sloppy game offensively for the Red Raiders in general. But, but the thing about McClung's game against Baylor was that I mean, as I mentioned, Tech was really struggling early to score, and he kept them in it. Uh, so without McClung, that game would have been ugly. ugly. Uh, so, yeah, the five turnovers is never good. I think he'd be the first to tell you. If not, <laughs> Coach Beer would be the first to tell you. But he did some really good things in that game. And overall, obviously, what a great week for the reigning Big 12 Player of the Week. Well, one thing I can say with certainty is that Texas Tech will not have a repeat player uh, or a player this week earning Big 12 Player of the Week. That's because both of Texas Tech's games have been postponed due to COVID-19 issues. First off, TCU uh, and Texas Tech's matchup was originally scheduled for this upcoming Wednesday. Uh, it was announced Monday night that that was going to be postponed. Uh, Horn Frogs head coach Jimmy Dixon has come down with COVID-19, and then TCU also had other COVID-19 related issues. So that game has been postponed. And then on Tuesday afternoon, uh, Iowa State, who has missed its last couple of games anyway with COVID-19, um, the game between them and Texas Tech for this upcoming Saturday in Lubbock has also been postponed. So that means Texas Tech, like I said, will not play this week. Their next game is scheduled for 8 p.m. Monday night in Morgantown against number 14 West Virginia. So I, you know, I hope we'll, we'll be able to see that game. You'd hate for it to be like, a, you know, TCU, this is their third Wednesday would be their third consecutive missed game due to COVID-19 uh, problems. Some of it theirs, some of it, you know, other teams. So there's just a lot of this going on right now. You, you know, you really hate to see it. Obviously, you hope everyone's safe. 
but also just the carnage is happening on the schedule. I mean, I think I saw where Villanova was returning to action after 27 days off. I mean, this is crazy. So, but I guess that's just par for the course for the times we're living in right now. But I don't know about y'all, but I was just really, really, really getting into Red Ritter basketball as, you know, it seems that kind of Kevin McCuller getting better and maybe shedding uh, some guys that weren't working out like Amari Burnett uh, and Joel and Tomway had kind of helped Texas Tech um, come together. And they were playing really good basketball. So, you know, you hate to see them have to take a break. But then again, you know, you could argue maybe they could use a break after two tough matchups. I know one thing, it'll be nice that they don't have to play Saturday and then Monday uh, in Morgantown. That's a tough stretch. So uh, now they can, you know, they, they know they have West Virginia on their schedule for Monday. They can have a good week of practice, hopefully, and uh, be prepared to take on, you know, a really good West Virginia team. And, you know, another top 15 matchup for Texas Tech. So I'm looking forward to that game. I'm sorry that these games have been postponed, but I think if you step back and look at it, um, the bigger picture, I'm just glad they're having a season. They're trying to get it done. And these hopefully these, we'll just look back at this as uh, just some minor hiccups on the way to, uh, you know, a great college basketball season. But that's the main gist. That's what's going on right now with Texas Tech basketball. So with that, I want to thank you for watching. And until next time.